What's up, no coders? So at the end of part two of the client portal series, I did talk about a part three and that is here today. Uh, this is going to be the first of a series in terms of advanced features of building your own client portal uh, using software and Airtable. If that's of interest to you, um, you're going to enjoy this video. I would, as always, recommend that you subscribe to my channel and uh, I, I guarantee you I will be continuing with more content content like this into the future. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, so we're going to pick up where we left off at the end of part two. If you're just joining this video and you haven't tuned into part one and part two, I'd recommend that you pause now, jump back to part one and part two. It'll show you how we built uh, the client portal to the current position that it's in. Effectively, what this client portal allows you to do is to start, um, you know, creating a level of, of, of interactivity with your clients, particularly for a service type business, uh, where you might want to share um, documents and have a, have a shared um, place where you can store private information between you and your client. In part two of the series, we showed you how we um you know you can set up a basic portal and how you can use a user's email address to filter um documents that relate to that specific user and they can't see other users information obviously very important that they only see what is relevant to them and um you know i suppose that it was it was a basic setup it shows you the possibilities of using airtable and software in this way um, in this video, what we're going to show you next is actually how to now let your client interact with you through the portal. So the first step in that will be, well, how can a client actually upload a document to the portal? Um, so that's what we're going to show you here today. In the next couple of videos, we're going to show you things like how to allow your clients to leave comments on, on documents that have been uploaded um, and how to see any related documents to a, a document that they've clicked into so say for example you might be an accountancy firm and you might have a client and you do their VAT returns for them you might do your their income tax returns and you might do um, several other work streams for them and when they click into one particular VAT return you might want to have displayed at the bottom of, of that particular screen all of the other VAT returns that are available on the client portal. So it's again, it's another feature within software that allows you to show a related list on a list details page. If you're familiar with software, those two terms will make sense to you. And if you've watched video one and two, I, I hope that they'll make sense to you at this stage. Okay, so we're gonna just refresh on, here's our Airtable base, which powers our, um, our client portal. And, um, you know, obviously a very simple base. The idea is the people is this is our users table and then documents. This is where all of the documents across all of our users is going to be uh, stored within Airtable to be presented on our software built client portal. And um, obviously in this instance, we only have one particular user set up, Brad at pit.ie. Pretty surprised when I saw Brad Pitt signing up to accountify.ie, but sure look, it's obviously no code that a YouTube channel has has really uh, broken barriers and has particularly gone viral. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, anyway, if you want to see what it is we're building here today, you can head over to accountify.ie. Accountify.ie is really just a, a side project thing. It's not a commercially viable project as yet. It's something I'm building and shooting videos on as I'm making it. Um, but you can sign up for an account here, go in, start playing around with what I'm about to show you here. Um, in fact, we might do that just now. I'll demonstrate what we're about to, um, I'm, I'm about to show you how to make. So we'll sign up as um, where we've done Brad Pitt. So, I mean, we might as well go with someone along the lines of, oh, throw out a name there. Um, okay, we'll go with Jennifer Aniston then, right? So Jennifer... Uh, Aniston, I don't know if that's the right spelling, Jennifer at Aniston.ie and throw in your password there. I think I will agree to the terms on the privacy policy and I'm going to sign up. Okay, 
So this should now direct me to Jennifer Aniston's client portal. Okay, it does. So what's new now versus what you would have seen at the end of part two is there's this ability here for the user when they've logged in to actually upload a document to their portal. So in this instance, I'll just upload a, do a dummy document so you can see what it is we're, we're doing here. So document name, let me just think, say Jennifer Aniston, obviously she's very successful, a uh, very successful actor and she probably has a pretty hefty income tax return to do. So we'll look upload um, her income tax uh, 2020 information that she'd like to share with her accountant. I there had a particularly exciting year in 2020. This is just to allow notes. Um, uh, 2021 was even better. Um, as you may have seen the Friends reunion. Anyway, I don't know if she would be conversing this way with her accountant of all people. So type, right? So again, this can be configured to whatever your business in, so your business is. Um, I'm just using these types of things as, as an example, and I'm sure you're getting all sorts of ideas as to how you might use this for your business. Um, so income tax return is probably the most suitable one. And what we'll do here is now just at attach in a dummy um a, a dummy tax return effectively we're going to go to it's gone into a, i've got some dummy documents here to upload a document for this one okay so it's now just attaching in and uh, when that's there it's now finished loading i'm going to hit upload and that is now ideally in my base so when i uh, come into the air table base there it is there um, you'll see that um, uh, Jennifer Anderson has signed up to the web page that we just did there and in the documents tab here there is uh, Jennifer Anderson's documents um, we'll go through the various fields here obviously that's the, the 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 name that was submitted or the document name uh, then we have those notes if you wanted to leave a note to your uh, to, to your service provider um, and then the type is here in the single select field and it's a single select on on software as well and then the actual attachment that was attached in here is here here it is there um, and this is the linked record so it's automatically knows that um, it was Jennifer Anderson that submitted this document and it wasn't Brad Pitt um, so what we might do is for demonstration purposes i'll probably copy that picture down there um, and it shows you when this was up uploaded the date because i'm th also going to present that on the on the client portal okay so if we come back in now and if we just refresh this page i'm hoping that the thing will show up there for jennifer anson and, and there it is so it's worked and uh, so I suppose the only other thing I might just demonstrate before I actually show you how this was built and show you the back end of how this was done um, is I might just log in as Brad Pitt and show you that Brad Pitt sees entirely different information. In fact, all Brad Pitt should see is actually all of the other four things here that has Brad Pitt's email address linked to it, right? So if we come back in here, I'm going to sign out of, of Jennifer Hansen's portal and I'm going to sign in as Brad Pitt. Um, so it's Brad at brad at pit.ie i will log in there and let's just see hopefully this works and it looks like it has worked okay yeah there's only four things there and again you can click into any of these and you'll see whatever that particular document is and you can come back to your portal then and um, so that looks to be fully functional brad pitt only sees brad pitt's documents and jennifer aniston only sees jennifer aniston's documents right so how do we do this? Well, it's pretty much you just use a form block within software, right? And I'll show you how to configure the form block if we come back into the software. Back end on this here. Um, so you have your list block here being the documents that your client can see based on their user email address that they've logged in with. And then down below that particular list, you have this uh, form block, which you can get from the blocks here. And if you come down, there's a form block. And I always go with the talk to a sales representative form here. The reason being it allows you to add as many fields or take away as many fields as you would like, whereas some of these other ones, uh, they're a little bit restricted in their format. So I'll always start with this sales form here. Anyway, we'll come back to the main table. Now, the key to this is when Jennifer Aniston uploads a document, um, I want 
my Airtable base. I want my portal to know that it's Jennifer Aniston's file. Nobody else is allowed to see that file other than Jennifer Aniston and the service provider that Jennifer Aniston is submitting the file to through this particular client portal. So the, the way to do that is the other thing you don't want is you don't want your user to have to enter their email address every time. And I suppose to ask them to actually enter their email address as a field here. Well, uh, what's to stop Jennifer Aniston guessing another client's email and putting in that client's email in here? And suddenly now that client has stuff showing up on their client portal that's not submitted by them. So the key thing to use here is a, a hidden field within the form and in that hidden field software allows you to actually say that when this user hits the upload button I want you to include that user's email in the in the email field in the email hidden field by default. So that's how that works so at the moment um i'll show you how that works there's just a little bit of a snippet that you'll need to actually copy and paste in but there's the hidden field email address you'll see there um it's got the the the, the dash through the eye obviously signifying it's hidden everything else here is just a, a standard field i don't know if I show, I don't think I showed in part one or two how to actually set up a form, so I'll go through this briefly. The key thing is that you match the, the type, the field type with the field type in Airtable that you're trying to match it to. So there's name, it's a single text field. So this particular type is a single line text uh, form input type. Uh, the other critical thing when you're setting up a form is we're going to tell uh, software what to do when the user hits the upload button and it the, the thing we're going to tell it to do is to send the form to Airtable, right? Um, so in order for Airtable to know what to do with the data that it's just received from your form through your software built website, it, it, you use this tag field under each of your inputs um, and you put in the exact name of the heading of the uh, of the column within your air table um table right so you'll see there uh, you know i've got name in there so that corresponds with that particular the first um the first the first column there and um when you come down to notes again this is a long text field um, and I've put in notes being what is exactly at the top of the notes uh, the, the named column there effectively right so that's the real critical part for it to actually work and um, document type again I've 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 put this against um, a type being a single select field and software allows you to select this type of drop down which is the type that corresponds to single or multi select fields within Airtable um, and then obviously attachment being the actual document that the user is going to upload right um, now the real key to this entire tutorial is this particular field here so the hidden field um, whereby we're saying put the logged in user's email address in it's not going to show on the form but every time they submit something through this form it's going to send their email address to the client email uh, field here in Airtable which is actually linking it to the user base here and as a result it's showing you all of the documents associated with that particular user based on their email address. So that is really the, the, the critical part. Um, I will copy and paste this piece of text that you will need in order to um, allow um, uh, software to, to, to know what it is you're looking for them to, to input. Um, and uh, that'll be in the in the in the description of the video below so feel free to make a note of that and you can use it in your own projects um, the other key this to this is that it's a hidden field right um, so you want this to you just select the hidden type and then obviously the tag client email which is um, the email address uh, uh, record in here okay look it was really just a quick one for today I hope you found that tutorial to be uh, useful and um, you know it's really the first step of interactivity that uh, your, your portal will require at a minimum really what good is a portal if a user can't upload stuff to it and um, in the next 
few videos in this series we're going to show you things like i already mentioned earlier about being able to show say you click into income tax returns and um, you know and, and you get to the income tax return list detail page uh, at the bottom of that page you might put in another list block and that list block might be um either associated documents or so other income tax returns or it might be other support um input type documents that were used in generating that specific income tax return Turn, right so basically the the what this is is basically a related um items list uh, on the list details page i don't know if i'm talking in too much softer terminology there but effectively it's where you go say to a blog and it below the blog post that you're reading it tells you you might also be interested in in these types of blogs and they're basically blogs that might be a list that's filtered based on something uh, that that ties it to the actual blog post that you're reading right i may have completely overcomplicated that but it'll make more sense in in a future video um other other uh, advanced features that we'll show is things like um how to actually um you know allow users to now comment again on something that they've already submitted right so um again that can be useful where say um jennifer aniston in the example that i showed you submitted her income tax return now say the accountant has gone reviewed the income tax return and um feels that uh, you know maybe it's worth that they have a call about it because um you know there's maybe a huge tax bill or there's a huge tax liability that's coming out of uh, jennifer's income for the year and um so the accountant might leave a comment hi jennifer does a particular time suit you to chat through the above and in the portal it'll show it'll show that comment and the user will be able jennifer will be able to log in and basically say yes when suits and puts in a time and date or something along those lines but basically it's continuing to build the level of interactivity that is available to your end users and um, through your portal it's really quite comprehensive what can be done there's probably a few tricks that need to happen in your Airtable back end to enable some of the more advanced interactivity type features currently uh, there is a release coming up on softer and um, that will allow um, actual updating of records and um, in uh, in Airtable, which I personally think is going to really dramatically um in, in increase um you know the level of 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 portal or client portal or membership site or forum or, or community that you're able to build using softer. I think being able to update Airtable records um through softer, it's really putty. I feel it's gonna launch softer and um, you know right up there in terms of competing with the likes of stacker or with mini extensions these are um other tools used um with Airtable that allow uh, you know that enable or or or, or increases the ability of Airtable to be shared and used with users that may not actually have an Airtable account themselves and it enables those users to update records in in your in an air table that you have set up and i suppose the the need for these services such as softer stacker mini extensions etc pori is another one the the need for those um no code tools i suppose is driven by air tables um continuing um i suppose uh, it's probably intentional whereby they don't allow um users to actually update records in a base through a shared view it actually would require you giving that user um a collaborate collaborative access to the base which basically means that they can see absolutely everything within the base that you've shared with them if you want them to be able to update things one workaround that you commonly see put out there is that oh you can share a view and a form field but again that only allows the user to actually up Date and add, or not update sorry add new records to your Airtable base it doesn't allow them to update things unless you use some form of scripting or or some sort of complex integromat or zapier workflow so um you know i think this is i have it here on the screen you can see it is on the pricing now it is granted it's only on the professional and the business plan so it's not for it's not going to be for everybody but this professional plan here i suppose is probably good value when you look at it in comparison to the likes of stacker which is quite quite um quite quite expensive and i suppose when you look at it in in comparison to mini extensions which has a monthly recurring fee i think it's 39 dollars or something like that and um, i suppose it, it comes down to what your personal preference is um 
Okay, well, look, I don't know why I've gone off on a bit of a tangent there, but um, I hope you enjoyed the video today. I hope you learned something from it. Um, I hope the sound quality was better. Um, and in, in future videos in this series, we're going to show you uh, more ways, uh, more tricks to use your Airtable backend to really per increase the the interactivity that you can have through your, your software uh, portal. Um, and also, I suppose I'm excited about this particular update date and i'll be doing a video on that and um, probably in and of itself just to demonstrate i think that's going to be a bit of a game changer and um, for, for for the software tool I'd, I'd be interested to hear if you're if, if you'd feel any any opinions on it or if you have any thoughts on the matter please leave some comments in the comment section below i forgot to i forgot to uh, plug my own video my own channel here and um, so please do hit the subscribe button please click the like button we're a new channel we're growing i've gotten some good feedback and i'd love to see it keep going i'm enjoying making these videos and i hope you're enjoying watching them if there's anything you'd like to see in a future video please let me know okay thanks a million for watching have a nice weekend everybody bye bye I also meant to say I actually had a few comments um, on some of my videos about the poor sound quality uh, so I've gone out and I've invested in a little microphone here so I hope that has improved the situation somewhat. Uh, you might let me know if this has improved and if it has made your viewing experience all the better and if so hit that like button.